To perform myofascial release on your lower legs and your ankles, grab a tennis ball or a massage ball or similar tool to start. Take one of your legs, bring it out in front of you, place the ball right underneath the muscle behind your leg, and then press down. Actively use your leg to press down into the muscle. Your other leg can be wherever it needs to be that's comfortable for you. And then start just by noticing what you feel. You can slowly roll on the ball a little bit, going up and down your calf. You can also move your leg side to side, noticing what you feel. Remember, the first thing is to explore and look for areas of discomfort. Um, for some of you, this can be really painful. Others, you're not going to notice much just using the ball with one leg. So if you're not feeling a lot, I want you to cross your other leg on top and now press both legs into the ball. See if you can find a spot that feels tender. And then once you find that tender spot, that's where you want to hang out. And that's where you want to breathe, especially the big exhales. Try to let the muscle relax, melt. Wait for it to release up to maybe 20, 30 seconds. And then once it releases, move on. And remember, it can release in just a few seconds sometimes. Find your next spot. If this is really painful for you, you can use a roller. Remember, be sure to rotate your leg internally so you get more on the inside and externally so you get more on the outside. Find that next spot with or without the other leg on top. Once you find your spot, hang out there and breathe. It can also feel good to draw your body forward, do a little bit of a forward fold. That might help you dig in to a spot a little bit better. You can also flex your feet, so pull your toes back towards your face. And that's another way to get into a, a trigger point or a tender spot and work it out. So stay on the area until it feels a bit better or move on after about 30 seconds. Healthy tissue should not feel uncomfortable. So if you're doing this and it feels uncomfortable, that means you need it. I'm going to move on to another spot because that area feels okay for me now. You are welcome to come down towards your ankle and you can also come up towards the back of your knee but I do want you to avoid the back of your knee stay in the muscle in the muscle portion don't get right behind the back of the knee Remember the breathing. The breathing is how you make big change. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and switch sides. If this tool felt like it was right for you, you could find some areas that felt tender and areas that you could work on, then go ahead and stick with the same tool on the other side. Um, if on the other hand, you felt like this wasn't right for you. I'm going to go through some other tools now on the other side. So you stick to what you had if you liked that. Otherwise, follow along with me and try some other things. So I mentioned using the roller. If that was really painful for you with the ball, then you want to go to the roller. This doesn't dig in very much for most people. Another option is a smaller ball. Also, let me grab a block. You can use a block or a book if you need to raise the height of your leg. Just depending on your body, 
this might work better for you to have your leg high up on a ball. But the other thing I want to show you is the dowel or the PVC pipe. A rolling pin also can work really good here. Um, weights. If you have a dumbbell, you can use the bar in the center of the dumbbell underneath your leg. Again, if you need higher, you can. This digs in a lot more. A uh, wood dowel digs even more than this usually because they're smaller. You can cross your leg if you need more. So as always, you gotta find your sweet spot. You gotta figure out what digs in enough for you that you can find and release the uncomfortable spots, the trigger points, but you don't wanna dig in so much that you can't breathe controlled. You don't wanna dig in so much that you're having to hold your breath or that you feel stressed. You want this to, in the end, be relaxing and provide some relief. So with that said, figure out which tool you want and work on the other leg. Again, finding those, those spots, those trigger points. One side is often worse than the other, so don't be surprised if you find that. If you find a spot that's too painful to hang out in the center of it, feel free to work around it. So if I had one right here, then I might want to work the left side, the right side, below it and above it versus being right on that really painful spot. Remember, you can flex your foot, you can forward fold. Feel free to just move your leg and your body around until you can find the right spot for you. You want to avoid the side of your knee in addition to the back, so don't get into this, this section here either. Okay, if you need more time on the back of your legs, go ahead and pause me, otherwise we are going to move on. Let's work on the medial side or the inside of your lower leg. There are many ways to do this, but my favorite is to bring my leg in front of me. Um, you could also probably do this on a chair if you need to, crossing one leg over the other, that's an option as well. I like to take a ball, so grab a ball to start any size, place it on the soft part muscle, so you're not gonna be right on the bone, you're just gonna be on the inside of the bone. Take your hand, and roll the ball, press the ball into your leg, roll it around, and as we always do at first, explore. See what you feel. See if you can find the uncomfortable spots. And when you do, hang out and hold on it. And breathe. And get it to release. Once it releases, move on, find another spot. Another option to the ball is to use your elbow. This is gonna be a bit deeper, but again, you get to decide how much you wanna push. You can also take your elbow and you can slide it all the way down your lower leg. spot right here so I'm gonna put the ball and I'm gonna press there and breathe so when you have a restriction or an adhesion off your on your fascia then you can't function fully the muscle and the joints 
that attach to it cannot move fully. So what we're doing here, this SMR or MFR, it loosens the muscle fibers and it loosens the fascia, kind of removes the stickiness. And then your muscles can better move. They can better contract and relax. All right, let's move on to the other leg. You decide if you want to use the ball or your elbow. Another option, it's not my favorite, but it might work better for your body, is to take the ball, place your leg more behind you with a bent knee, take the ball, place it under the inside of your lower leg, and now press down with your leg. Everybody can move their move themselves differently. So if this works better for you, this is perfectly okay way to do it. To get a little more weight, you could cross your other leg on top. No, this can be really painful for a lot of people. Calves can be one of the worst areas. Um, I know it might not feel good, but just trust me, it will get better. You will reap the rewards later for all of your hard work. While you're there, try flexing and pointing your foot. I'm going to hold mine in the flex because when I do that, I can feel that it's uh, more tender. It's not too painful, but I think I'll get more out of it if I flex my foot on my spot. If you want to work the inside of your lower leg more, go ahead and pause me and keep doing that. Otherwise, we are going to move on. Let's work your shin bone now. So the front, the front here of your lower leg. You can use a single ball. The best, though, in my opinion, is a double ball. Remember, you can put two tennis balls or two racket balls in a sock and tie a knot in the end, a tube sock. Or you can get massage balls in a bag that looks something like this. If you don't have this, go ahead and use one ball. It will work. So come onto your knees. If you have a single ball, you are going to place it not on the bone, but just to the outside of your bone, and you're going to work that area along the outside of your bone. If you have the double ball, you're going to place the center of the balls where it's soft right above the bone. So that way nothing's going to be pressing on your bone. It's going to be massaging either side of your bone. So place that under your leg. Always start by exploring, see what you feel. You can rotate your leg a little left and right, left and right. Slide the ball down towards your ankle or up towards your knee. Stay off your kneecap. And then as you explore, find a spot. See if you have a spot, hang out there, breathe. If you find this isn't quite enough for you, you can take your other leg and cross it over and then kind of squish, squish your body down on the ball. You can even rotate, kind of twist your hips left and right here. So just moving. I'm just trying to give you ideas on how to move so that you can find those spots a little bit easier. And then once you find the spot, you just hang out. You don't need to move the whole time. Just move enough to find it, hang out there, breathe, wait for it to release. 
So mine already feels better. So I'm gonna move and find another spot. So when I talk about it releasing, um, for me, I often feel like I must have moved a tiny bit because it all of a sudden just feels a little bit better. It doesn't hurt quite as much as it did. And I, and I didn't move a little bit. <laughs> I just think, oh, I must have moved. It all, all, all of a sudden feels better. This is another one where you can try pointing and flexing your foot. Pointing is probably gonna be the one that's gonna have you feel it a little bit more. So no matter what tool you use, please stay off of your shin bone. All right, let's switch sides. So if you have that single ball, remember you're mostly working the outside of the bone. The double ball is just kind of a bonus because you get to work the inside too. But the single works, I'll turn this way. The single works just as well. Um, I just find it's a little more slippery for me. So I found a spot, so I'm gonna kind of sit back, put some extra weight on it, and breathe. Explore, wiggle, point and flex. Remember, you can always cross the second leg if you feel like you need more. Keep in mind that this is not forever. Hopefully you won't have to do this the rest of your life. Um, at least not the same spots. <laughs> I mean, depending on your body and the quality of the myofascial release that you do, you should find that the pain is better in a few days or a few weeks. Okay, if you need more on your shins, please pause this video and take the time that you need for your body. Otherwise, we're gonna move on. Okay, moving on down, let's work on your ankle, your heel cord. Again, a ball is gonna work, or the other tool that I really like is the dowel or a PVC pipe, but again, it's gonna depend on your body. So maybe start with the ball first and see how that feels for you. Literally just placing it right on your heel cord, on your ankle, and then press your leg down. Gets away from you, just put it right back. It's a little slippery. You can point and you can flex, especially that flex is where you might feel it. I'm gonna to switch to the PVC pipe. I like that better. Uh, rolling pin's fine. You want to actively press your leg down into the pipe or whatever tool you're using. You can rotate more to the outside. You can rotate more to the inside. Once again, exploring. Feel what you feel. Find where you need to do the work. You can cross the other leg on top. Find your spots and hang out. Ooh, there's a good one for me. Hmm. So the lower legs and the ankles that, working, that we're working today can really help with your dorsiflexion. Dorsiflexion is how much you can pull your foot back. So not this one, but this one. 
And when these muscles are tight and your heel core is tight, that can really cause a lot of issues with your dorsiflexion, inhibiting how you walk, how you run, how you squat. Okay, switch sides and do the other heel cord. If you have really tight legs on the back side, um, even though you might think sometimes that your hamstrings are tight because you can't touch your toes, um, oftentimes the culprits are more the back of your legs, your heel cord, and the bottom of your feet. haven't watched the foot video yet, make sure you get a hold of that one. Feet are very important. They're the foundation, like the foundation of a house. Our entire body weight is supported by your feet. So you definitely want to take care of them. Again, I'm just exploring. I'm going on the inside, the outside, right in the center of the heel cord, pushing down enough that I can find, you know, trigger points, uncomfortable spots, but not so much that I can't uh, breathe and relax. Hmm. So sometimes it's our skin that gets a little stuck. So I want to teach you one more thing. If you have a ball that's rubber and sticky, that's gonna be best. So take the inside of your ankle, find the bone. You do not wanna be on top of the bone. You wanna be just behind the bone. Place the ball there in that kind of soft spot. Push it down and then twist a little bit. Release, push it down and twist the other way. Your skin should be moving freely. If it's not, then this is a good one for you to do. Try it on the inside of the other foot. You can take your fingers and move the skin and see if it moves around. The skin should be loose and move freely. If it's not, then it might be stuck. And if you kind of pin it down with the rubber on the ball and then twist, it can um, kind of pry it loose. And we're gonna go both directions. You can do it a few times. And you can also do this on the back. Same thing, avoiding the bone, but get behind it on the heel cord side. You can check it with your fingers again, see if it wiggles, if it's loose or not. And if it's not, maybe put this on your list. I'm going to do the other one. All right, again, if you need more, feel free to keep working. Otherwise, that's it. That's it for your lower legs and your ankles. Moving on to some mobility for your ankles and your calves. Um, probably best if you have a seat, sit in a chair. You can also do this standing. I'm going to sit on a couple of blocks so that you can still see me. Okay, so you might recall from last week when we worked on the feet that I taught you how to lift your big toes and lift your little toes. Hopefully you've been working on that and it gets getting a bit easier for you. 
Um, if you haven't seen the feet video, you might want to go do that first and work on that for a week before you move on to this one. Um, but just like in the foot video, you want to have your ankles um, aligned appropriately, nice and straight. You want to have an arch in your feet, so don't let your feet dump in. Have that nice arch and lift those little toes. So hopefully you've got that down by now. Um, if you've been working on it and you still can't do this, don't worry about it. Keep working on it. Please keep working on it and then come back to this one. Once you are able to lift your little toes, then come back to this exercise. So lifting the little toes, I want you to just tap one foot up and down, up and down. Keep the little toes lifted. If you can tap both feet at the same time, you can do that or you can go back and forth if that's easier for you. I won't ask you to pat your head and rub your tummy at the same time. And I'm going to move on to both. And then watch your feet when they move. Make sure your ankles still stay straight and that your arches don't collapse. Don't want your knees coming in. Don't want your feet coming in or going out for that matter. Some of you might find that your feet want to go to the outside. Don't let them. You come up and you come down. You should feel the ball of your feet, especially your big toe touching each time you come down. So you might start to feel a muscle working from the bottom of your foot around the outside of your lower leg and up towards your knee. If you do, if you're starting to cramp up or get tired here, then you probably need this exercise. So if you're feeling that, I would recommend that you do this three times um, until you're maybe 90% exhausted. So when you're getting to the point where you feel like you can't do very many more, then stop, take a break, shake it out maybe for 10 or 20 seconds, and then go back in, do a second set, and then do a third set. So that's the first exercise. Um, the other one I want you to do uh, a little bit of a twist on calf raises. So if you need to go um, to your stairs and find a step to work on or go outside on a curb, that will work. I'm going to use blocks. If you've got blocks at home, that will work as well. I'm going to place them next to each other like a step. So whatever step you decide to use, come up onto the step. Have the center of your foot on the edge of the step. Feel free to hold on to something. Lift your little toes. So most of the pressure is in the ball of your big toe. Keeping fairly straight legs, lift your heels up and down. Continue that motion, heels up as high as you can, lower your heels down as low as you can. Keep trying to lift your little toes. And if you're not already, look down at your feet and ensure that your ankles are straight forward, your knees are straight forward. We don't want so toes are lifted. When you come up, you don't want your ankles rolling out. You don't want your knees or your feet rolling in. You want everything to stay nice and straight as you lift up and lift down, keeping those toes lifted as best you can. And you bring your body weight forward. Step off the blocks, shake it out. This time, setup is the same. Back on the blocks, lift your little toes, but this time I want you to kind of send your hips back a bit as you bend your knees. Slightly bend your knees, again, hold on to something. And now this time, keep your knees bent as you lift your heels up and down. Heels come up as high as they can, keeping the knees bent. They come down as low as they can, keeping the knees bent. Be mindful when you come up, not to straighten your legs. Keep the bend the entire time. Okay. 
you should feel this in a little bit different place than the other one. Okay, step it down, shake it out again. So if it works for you, I recommend that you do two more sets of each of those. So calf raises with the legs straight, calf raises with the legs bent. If you printed the body chart, go ahead and grab it with the writing utensil. I want you to note how uncomfortable this was for each area that we worked on. I recommend using a scale of one to five, where five is the most painful, three is in the middle, so I would probably consider that uncomfortable, and one feels nice, um, unnecessary, I think is a good word. For areas you noted a three, four, or a five, I want you to add any notes, such as a particular technique or a tip that you might want to remember when you're working on that area. Now remember, if your body conditions or intuition tells you an area is not right for you, please do not do it. I want you to seek help from a professional instead. So for the next week, I want you to work on all the areas that you noted as a three or up, so a three, a four, or a five. There really is no exact plan for how much time you should spend on any one area. Honestly, you just, you gotta, you gotta work with it for a while and you gotta find your sweet spot where you're doing it enough that you are making positive change, but not so much that you're wasting your time or um, bruising yourself. Um, I would say just to give you an idea on average, five times a week is probably good and maybe two to three minutes per area. But again, everyone is going to be different. Uh, hopefully you will find like me that your pain level adjusts quickly. I might be a five in one area and then a week later I'm a four and then a week later I'm a three. I mean, sometimes our body adjusts really, really quickly and the pain scale will go down fast. Um, I had a muscle, it was in my back, that would take about five minutes of work for me to feel better. But after a few weeks of doing it one to two times a day, it started releasing in seconds. Um, I started doing it less and less. Uh, again, originally I was doing it daily, but now I only do it when I need it. Um, and, and hopefully that's what you will find as well, that it will release quicker and you won't need it nearly as often. Um, other things to note, I want you to drink lots of water and know that you might be sore tomorrow. If so, take a break from that area and then you can try and do it again the next day if you're not sore anymore. If you need help with the areas, feel free to just watch the videos over and over and do it with me. Otherwise, once you've got it down, just feel free to do it on your own. Either way, be sure to make it quality work. Uh, your muscles are gonna release faster if you just relax, focus on what you're doing, and most importantly, remember to breathe, especially those big exhales. With that said, I will see you next week.